Next question is why do we need to, why do English uh, table ten, aspiring table tennis players need to leave England to make it as a player? Now, uh, we have kind of like covered this, I guess, uh, but yeah. I, I think it is being in that environment where you can train regularly with people who are best than you, essentially. Yeah. It, it, you need to be playing regular people, uh, regular uh, players who are just going to put you through your limits. Get that coaching as well. That's the thing is that you mentioned earlier about training with uh, different uh, coaching uh, coaches. Now it's really good for your development. That's quite right yeah. when you go abroad because it's a different style of coaching, I found. Um, yeah. You learn yeah. much more intense and uh, smaller details when you go abroad. Yeah. That really helped improve the game. I find, I find in England, I mean, uh, me growing up in England as a junior cadet, it might, it's obviously evolved since, those, since the 90s, obviously. Mm. But I find in England, the, the technique of the shots, we have the knowledge in England, the technical knowledge is, whoa, it's through the roof. Yeah. Um, and it's sometimes I feel it's too technical when you when you grow growing up in table tennis yes, in England. Yes, yes, yes. Too technical because when you come to Germany, it's. Um, I mean, I, I it's what as a coach, I learned from a young age. You you need to yeah you need to have your the tech the technique needs to be efficient. Yeah. You don't need to, you need to be like a certain needs to be like this. There needs to be flexibility to the individual. Everyone's got different. Uh, bone structures, for example, you can't force players to play no, you know, how yeah, you think yeah. as a coach. You know? And and the thing in Germany, the the big thing is um, the consistency level on the table. Yes. And to be consistent on the table, we, going back to the physical side again, you have to be strong. You have to be strong yeah. to. Be, yeah. You know, like, you know, yeah. You hear hear about in China. Well, um, Mike, I was lucky. Alan Lowe went to China and seen it. You know, youngsters playing 100 forehands, 100 backhands, and the technique, no matter what the technique is, it's not breaking down. No, not yeah. breaking down. Yeah, so yeah, to be yeah. consistent on the table, your body and your uh, muscle endurance needs to be a high level. Yeah. And uh, No, that's, can, that's a really good point, I think. Um, consistency is... Consistency is important, and then then on top of that, you need to build the tempo of your rallies, the speed. Yeah. The speed of the tempo that you're able to train at. So you need, and sometimes you need to be training at high tempo. But sometimes when you want to work on technique, and bring the tempo down, then speed it up again. Yeah, definitely. I mean, that is that's quite right. I mean, when you when you go to, I mean, when I look back at my how I was when I was a, a kid. I mean, I sometimes have to, I my dad sometimes took these videos, you know, when I was playing with uh, my old coaches back in the day. Like, I yeah. I wasn't very consistent in those days as as growing up as a player. And I'm not very consistent now, but <laughs> um, you know. But it's quite interesting because uh, when I look back then, sorry, at players around me from Europe, from France, from you know, Jeremy, all these great young players, they were already so consistent at, you know, young ages. And yeah. they would already learn that, um, that those important tips uh, that you just mentioned, tempo and uh, rhythm and these types of things. They'd already yeah. learned that. I got grounded in that from a young, young age. Um, and that's, that's, that's really interesting. But those are essential things to get, um, you know, to, to think about when you're training, definitely. And if you haven't watched my video, go check that out. I did talk about uh, three essential tips on uh, how, to, how to get the most out of your training. Yes, um, these tips you were saying, you pointed yeah, yeah. these things out. It's very important. Um, last one is what you actually need as a table tennis player. What equipment, these types of things. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I think so there are some players who who think you need to have, I mean, it's not like anything, you know, if you start, I don't know, piano, for example, you think you need like a grand piano to be, you know, uh, you know, this amazing pianist or something virtuoso. I think the thing is, is that um, you don't really need to have, especially starting out, you don't need to have the best equipment. Like I didn't, when I was, even as a junior, I was changing my rubbers twice a year, uh, once a year. So literally, I had two rubbers to last me the entire season. And my peers at that time were changing multiple times. They had contracts, for example. It's not, that won't make you that top player, at least not right now. You know, you need to, the, the basic skills definitely, which you can learn even with like, you know, uh, bats from, you know, your local store. You know, you don't, you don't need to have um, amazing equipment now. 
I mean, obviously, mm-hmm. as you as you get sort of the level where you're playing international, yeah, it helps. Of course, there are you know you, you, uh, having that good equipment when you've got I the basics ready. Yeah, in terms of equipment, this is when um, like your parents, if they have got money to buy you the best equipment, I think this is the only time in table tennis when you have you, you you're able to spend a lot of money on a table tennis bat where yeah. it can be detrimental to your development. So what I'm talking about here is the bat being too fast. Mm. If your bat is too fast, uh, too, too young age, and when you're developing your strokes, your backswing and your follow-through of your fall and topspin, for example, in the backhand, if your bat is too fast, you're, you end up not developing the backswing and the follow-through correctly. Mm. That's ball, quite right. The ball, yeah. ball's going at your partner too fast. Yeah, it's going yeah, to come yeah. back too fast. So you need that time, need need to train as slow tempos when you're developing. So it's important the bat's not too fast. Not at that level, definitely. Especially if you're starting that, out. That feel good factor when you're playing yeah. with a, a top standard bat, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Makes you feel good. It makes but... you feel good. <laughs> Some of those things. It's like having a nice like uh, you know hairstyle or something, Craig, isn't it? You think, oh, I'm gonna be yeah. looking good yeah. today or something like this, but it doesn't matter at the end of the day, you yeah. know. These little, little um, fine details in the sport, how to, uh, what to do at the correct times. This is where you need a, a good coach. I first went to Jersey. All the all the beginner, all the junior players were playing with this jeweler bomb <laughs> called right. the jeweler bomb, and it's Jula it's bomb. like a bolster, it's like a thick handle, very fast. Right. And I can't believe how many youngsters were playing with this jeweler bomb. Blade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, what's going on here? <laughs> the ball's just flying like, off everywhere. Is just... <laughs> like, I'm going to have to confiscate all these jeweler bombs. <laughs> First thing I'm doing as a development officer here, I'm confiscating <laughs> the jeweler bombs. <laughs> so that's really interesting, though, Craig, because I'm just going back to. Um, the initial our uh, first point about the our story you know the what we learned sort of as growing up and uh, that that grounding sort of respect and that must have actually really helped you when you went to jersey right because you learned that goal how to how to achieve a goal basically didn't you, you learned uh, you know you were already you were already there you knew what it yeah. is you wanted and you you already by that time knew how you were going to achieve those steps probably how, how was that going through all the pathways in table tennis in England, uh, regional level, county level, all the different tournaments there were, regional tournaments, and then up to the national ranking trials. I don't, I'm not sure if they do, they do national ranking trials anymore, but back then, yeah. in the 90s, you, you had all the top, all the top under 18 players enter once a year yes. national ranking trials, and you're in a group of eight players, and you have to be a strong player just to get through your group. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you got. Yeah, it's big, big tournament, but it's, that's how times have changed. Mm. Um, because then they went on to qualifying to play things through four stars, and then they yeah, 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 changed things. And um, yeah, going through the pathways in table tennis in England, I le- learned a lot how how start from grassroots, how to get through to performance, mm. participation to performance, and then so I studied four years uh, to a master's level at uh, Sheffield Hallam wow, University. Yeah. I got my first class honours degree, really wow. worked hard at university. So I, I was balancing my university and table tennis. I had no time to work. Very hard, yeah. no time for money. I decided before I went to university, I'm going to concentrate on my studies and my table tennis. And mm. so when I finished university and uh, this job came up in Jersey, um, was, I got an email from uh, Chris Band, who was the president back then. Okay. And they were very uh, motivated to have a development officer, uh, their first one. And yeah, I, I had clear visions of going out where I was, I was 23 years old. Right, okay, 23, yeah. still young, moved, yeah. Moved away from Sheffield, so Sheffield's only 20 minutes drive from work, it's not my hometown. So that was, it's like moving to a different country. Yeah, definitely, yeah. Uh, I mean, you have, to, you have to fly, don't you? And you have to get out there and yeah, yeah, you essentially are moving away, yeah. Like we were talking about before, it was very tough, tough move and mm. um, moving away from friends and family. Mm. And uh, yeah, but I had a uh, clear vision of what I wanted to do in Jersey, my goals, to mm. set up an academy, set up a strong schools program, to support the association as monthly meetings with the association, Jersey Table Tennis Association. We had all the tournaments, uh, how to get funding, managed mm. to get Bucharest Band, 
he uh, got a law firm to sponsor the academy. So oh, wow, yeah, 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 that helps. Yeah, provide, yeah definitely. Provide our, you know, the players that went through had three squads: beginners, development, through to performance, performance squad, and and those that got to performance, they got. You know, they got their kit, their jersey kit, their three lions. They went, went to four-star competitions and felt proud. And I think yeah. that's very important for Definitely. youngsters. Yeah, if they're working yeah. hard, they deserve they deserve things like this. But, but that's, um, that's a really yeah. important point. It's that goal, though, isn't it? It's like going back to, as they say, about the fire. Is that I think that's one of the things we learned from table tennis, which actually I think leads on to our, my, my last uh, question, as it were. It's about yeah. um, if we were looking back on it now, would we would we take the same path we did? Would we go after table tennis and would we play table tennis? And I think for me, yes, because I have learned so much from table tennis. I mean, as you said, it's not just about you know learning things like perseverance or any of these things, but it's learning to uh, it's learning to look after yourself in life. It's learning to yeah. um, uh, progress, not just in table tennis, but in in if you decide to go for a job and and how to also look after other people, how to, how to, how to speak with them and all these things. You're learning so many skills when you yeah. do table tennis and you move I always, I always say if you get to high level in your sport, it puts you at, at an advantage. If you go into, say, business, it mm. puts you at an advantage because you, you, to get to a high level in sport, you have to be very strong mentally and disciplined. Yeah. You need yeah, to learn yeah, yeah. the skills of working hard. And, and it puts you at an advantage when it, uh, to your competitors that haven't mm. got to high level in sport. They're going to be only hobby players. Mm. We, we, we hear sports stars teaching businesses how to progress business. Yeah. No, this that's, growth mindset. Yeah. That is that's quite right. I mean, the, the skills yeah, you learn in table yeah. tennis, they, they, they can really reflect in our, in our life skills. And I think that is, yeah. uh, you, that's a really important point. A, a, to get to high level in sport, you need to develop yourself as a whole, as a whole mm. person. Uh, psychologically as people we're all different and how how we work psychologically through sport you can learn this how mm. how to get the best out, out of ourselves now how, how you know what's our strengths and weaknesses as people yeah, you know, yeah if we yeah. have problems with anger management for example how to control that how to yes. stay cool yes yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. these things are all things like yeah i mean that's that's the thing when i look back on it but i think also the thing is you have to look uh when, when you go into table tennis, it's like you think, you know, as you said, you're doing it for the love and it or uh, doing it for the love of it, these types of things. But it's, mm. you know, it, it's the journey which you love, isn't it? It's not just the actual sport, but it's the journey you, you take yourself on. It's like, it's like basically going to university or think something like this, but it's, it's, a, it's unique, I think, isn't it? It's yep. a unique journey and it's quite, you, you know, you, you do a lot of soul searching, you do a, all of these things, you know, you, you learn about yourself and I think, what table tennis has to offer is brilliant. Uh, it's just, it is a shame that obviously there's not enough money really in the sport and these types of things, but yeah. it is, it is an amazing sport. But with, and with, without the money or not, when you're com, com, playing competitions, you're playing against all these play, all these players that want the same thing as you. Exactly. To win, to win yeah. that tournament. That's and a good to point. get through that is, yeah, yeah. it makes you feel Makes, makes you feel good. Purpose. Yeah, it makes, it makes you feel like you've done something worthwhile. And that's the thing with table tennis. Whenever you train, whenever you play, you feel it's always productive. You know, you're always yeah, doing it for the right reason. In the training hall yeah. and then doing that in a competition environment under pressure. Mm. And that's... That in any area of life. Exactly. And I think yeah. it's one of those things, when you, when you love doing something uh, and you can make that your, your job, you know, mm. That is like paradise. I mean, there's, I think there's a famous quote about that. Um, but I think, I think it is, you've got to, you've got to be clear minded though. Uh, you have to know that what it is you want, uh, as we were talking about goals earlier. I, I think, I think in my opinion, from, from talking about this, we've, we've also covered a lot of important things uh, and to sum up would be quite difficult. But I think mm. one important thing I think to give to players right now who are watching this who want to take that step to become a professional is don't put too much pressure on yourself. You know, take one step at a time, have your goal in your head, what it is you want to achieve, uh, but try to make that goal about the love of it. You know, if that means you want to become a really good player and prove to your fullest, your, uh, fullest of your ability, that's great. Uh, I would say go, go into the sport with your heart on the table, you know, uh, and uh, with a really open mind as well to learn, not be afraid to ask, for help and to just uh, give it everything, you know, 
uh, and to enjoy the journey because the journey which we go on is is beautiful and it is um, it really does help us for life. One important thing you do is always learn from your mistakes. I think that doesn't matter whether you're playing table tennis, whether you're studying, you know, learning from your mistakes is, is one way to really improve quickly. Because, yeah. uh, I mean, Confucius, the Chinese philosopher, uh, I think he said to one of his quotes was, um, a man who commits a mistake and then uh, doesn't correct it is co uh, committing another mistake. Uh, and that is that is very true because if you if you know you made a mistake and then you just keep on doing it, you're never going to improve. You know, you, you need to know uh, how it is you want to, for example, improve your forehand. Is it a technique you're doing wrong, for example, how you can change that, and make it better? And if you're constantly yeah. thinking about these things, like I was um, told to basically do when I went to Germany. These are ways I was told I could improve, and um, you know, it's just that is. They're just essential points, I think, how you can make it. But if you, if I wasn't there in Germany, I wouldn't have learned those things, which is quite interesting. And I would have at least I would have learned them a lot later in my life. Um, so the life skills you do get from table tennis is amazing. Um, yes. How you yeah. keep pushing forward, pushing forward through failures and exactly. setbacks, exactly. mistakes that you're making, how to. Yeah, and, and the, yeah, how to understand your mistakes, why you're making mistakes, and then yeah. the solution. Keep yeah, finding yeah, answers. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah.